So I, I very recently did an episode on starting my first SaaS application. And all of this background played into how that went and why I did it, um, why I actually dropped out of college to do it. Uh, but this is the mental health side of what happened. So in that episode, I was like, yeah, I dropped out of college after my third year, uh, essentially, uh, to, to start this company. Um, and this is really the background. So it was again in that semester where I just couldn't do any of my work, uh, any of my schoolwork and I was not doing well. And it, it wasn't like I didn't know the material, uh, at least when it came to the programming stuff, I, I was way, again, I, I knew it. It was like, I just it couldn't get myself to do the work. Um, and again, blaming myself, but it was like, okay, fine. I know I'm good at programming. I, I know compared to other people, I, I'm, you know, it's, it's hard to judge yourself in such things. So I'm not going to say I was like better than them necessarily, but I knew I was solid. I was like, I know... I am able to program at a level that it doesn't seem like a lot of people do. Um, and so I was like, this is my secret weapon. This is this is the answer. This is what I need. I need to use this skill to get myself rich because I will not survive otherwise. So this all played into dropping out to start uh, the software company. and. I, I tried to temper things in my head, so I, I might not have called it a startup, but I definitely hoped it would become a startup. I even tried to raise money at one point, sort of feebly, really badly. <laughs> but yeah, I I dropped out to work on a SaaS application that I actually did end up selling to people and, and having uh, some... I, I sold it to customers. I didn't end up making money by getting rich or anything. Um, so jumping ahead here. If you want to hear more about that story, um, it's a episode um, right right before this or two before this, I forget. But um, yeah, you can check that out. Maybe I'll even remember to link it or something. <laughs> yeah, if you want to hear more about how that went. Um, but this is definitely more focused on the mental health parts. And, you know, even working on that, that you know, startup or whatever it was, SaaS application. I definitely had <laughs> this pattern. I, I I I worked for months and months straight, like sixteen hour days. Definitely not healthy. Um, I was super happy. I loved it. It was amazing. It was so much better than doing my schoolwork. I'll tell you that. Like it was like wow. I am really building something and people are really using it and they actually like it and they pay me money for it. This beats homework 10,000 to one, you know, <laughs> this is so, so much better. Uh, so it felt great uh, until I eventually, you know, hit this pattern again and probably burned myself out if we're being honest and got depressed and it was about at this time that I started um, having to pay on my um, student loans. Uh, so, yeah, I, I wasn't making enough from this SaaS company to pay for living expenses, rent. I didn't pay rent for like six months. I eventually did make enough to pay it back before I moved out. I don't... I don't know why they, they didn't really, I don't know if they, if they had bad organization. They didn't know I wasn't paying rent. I don't really know, <laughs> to be honest, but they never said anything to me. <laughs> I just went this whole time not paying rent because I couldn't afford it. This was when I was like living on $30 a month food budget. And I was, I guess, yeah, this is a good time to talk about this. So the monetary aspect, I think, is really what underlied a lot of my actions and my feelings, even back in middle school. So the whole time it was like, I know I can work. I can build really good stuff. I can help people. I can make things. Uh, 
but the pattern that I do it in is I do eight months of work in three months time and then I take three months off. That's just how, that's just what I've been doing for years and I couldn't escape that. As much as I read all the self-help books and tried to, you know, have all the the best intentions and and everything I could think of, I couldn't get out of this pattern. So it's like, I can do the same amount of output as somebody else can in a year. Like over a long time span, I probably am on average just as productive as anyone else. If not even maybe more, I don't know. But I know I'm at least as productive over a long time period, but it's not consistent. Uh, And it was very clear to me that that's not the way society works. Uh, You come in and you do your job and you do it consistently. Um, Every employer I ever had, every job I ever saw people have, it was... And maybe this was my own limited perspective. Maybe there are and and were opportunities for me that would have worked better. But the world I grew up in, which was, I would say, you know, we started out, I wouldn't say necessarily super poor, but we didn't have much money for most of my life. Um, Like my parents, we ate oatmeal and going out to eat at a restaurant was, I don't know, once every few months and it was like McDonald's and that was, you know, a huge deal. Like we didn't, we didn't have a lot. We weren't like in super bad shape. Eventually, you know, my dad had a white collar job and, you know, that changed, you know, as I got older, they ended up having quite a bit more money, but it was still, you know, maybe a perspective of, you know, middle, lower middle class. And so maybe there were opportunities for me outside of that I didn't know about. But what I saw was the way that you worked was consistent, you know, doing this job consistently. Nobody hires you and, you know, lets you move up the ranks by working three months and then taking three months off like that. I never heard of that. I never saw that. And, and so I, I, this stress and this pit in my stomach, a lot of it came from being worried about surviving. I was like, how in the world can I possibly make enough money to survive if nobody wants, like, like I didn't know any job where I could make enough in three months to cover the time that I wasn't working and then you know, come back and not have to start over. It just, I didn't, I couldn't imagine anything like that. And so this whole time, it was a huge, like like money was the huge thing underlying all my stress. Um, and, and why I was so focused on a startup and getting rich? Because it was like, I don't, I can't imagine how I can do, you know, like I've said, what what these other people are doing to, to earn this, Like, how can I be a part of this society and not end up completely broke and not able to afford food? And and it was it was a huge, huge problem. And so I, I did this startup for a while and I made some money, but it didn't it wasn't a wild success. Nobody was knocking down my door trying to, you know, give me money and. I, that's what I imagined would happen. I was like, oh, I'm growing this thing so well. Investors are just going to knock on my door and give me money. And yeah, and that didn't happen. I kind of tried to raise money, kind of from family. Uh, but my family, this was, they were not into it at all. They didn't understand it at all. Nobody in my family, like everyone on both sides of my family were super what I call sort of Puritan work ethic, nine to five, you you don't rock the boat. You don't start your own company. You don't take that kind of risk. You do a nine to five. And so they, they had no, they, nobody helped me. Nobody in my family encouraged me or helped me in any of this. It was the complete opposite. It was, when are you going to get a real job? you know, that type of thing. And so it was, I think that was hard to overcome. I've seen now people that, that have been more successful on that journey had, 
like like almost all of them I talked to, oh yeah, you know, my parents were super encouraging or somebody was and, you know, oh yeah, they lent me some money or gave me some money to get started. And I didn't have any of that. When I dropped out of college, I I had, I don't know, I, I forget the exact amount, but like 50 bucks in my bank account. Um, I, I didn't have any money. Uh, I didn't, nobody, you know, nobody was helping me out. And I'm not saying that, that they should have or whatever. I'm just saying like in hindsight, again, I probably thought the path for starting a company, um, was a lot different than it seems like it actually is. There's absolutely a sort of old boys club, a, you know, your parents went to Stanford, you went to Stanford, you start a company, you're in this this world. I wasn't in that world. Um, I didn't know that at the time. And, and you can absolutely do this without being in this, that world. But I've learned <laughs> since then, you know, a lot of these stories about like, oh, this person started from nothing and built this amazing software company and sold it for billions. Yeah, usually when you read into it, it's like, oh no, they had lots of you know support and help. That that makes a big difference. And so I went, anyways, getting too far pontificating here. Uh, back to the story. So I, <laughs> yeah, it was it was rough. I needed money. Um, I I decided, and this is this is another pattern. It was like, okay, I feel trapped here. I this my plan didn't work with the startup i didn't get rich before i burned myself out essentially and it was like i need an escape and so i was like i'm gonna move 